Hello everybody. This is going to be a quick recap of Bacchus's skills and his builds because we got a long game today. So let's get into this. So we're going to start off with your typical builds on Bacchus. You got your Watcher's Gift, you got your Hog, you got your Pots. Nothing crazy there. Bacchus is one of the few gods that you're probably going to want to not build aggressively on support. This is just because you'll do a lot of damage on Bacchus base because of your AoE damage, so you don't need to do anything crazy. I would just build in your normal Midas boots and don't worry about this use of the Magi or this use of Focus. Uh, looking at your core build here, you're either going to want Hide of the Urchin or Sovereignty. Hide of the Urchin is a very good item on Bacchus because he is very mana hungry, especially early game because you're going to be chugging all the time in order to get your passive up. Um, sovereignty, of course, a must have on support if you're going to get Hide of the Urchin then you have to get Sovereignty after. If you get Sovereignty, you don't have to get High of the Origin after, but you might want to think about it. Magi's Blessing must have third or fourth item on support in order for securing objectives. By the time that third or fourth item comes around, will be about the time you guys are going to start to do Fire Giant, or the other team's going to start to do Fire Giant, and that's when you need to have it so you can secure or steal the Fire Giant. Looking at damage items, if you are going to build damage on Bacchus, it's probably going to be a 5th or 6th item Soul Reaver. That will be the best way to add some damage to your team. Uh, basically, when you get into their group and you jump on somebody, if you, you're going to want to jump on a Squishy. And if you do jump on their Squishy, that extra damage from the Soul Reaver will help your team hopefully blow them up before they ever get out of your jump. Looking at defensive items, of course, just Situational, Witchblade, Pestilence, Spirit Rub, all items that are very good in certain situations. Of course, your reactives, you've got your Wrath of the Gods, you don't get a choice, welcome to support, and Shell of Absorption, preferentially, and then of course Weakening Curse if uh, they have extensive healing. Looking at Bacchus's abilities here, we have his passive Drunkometer, which is, I think, the best passive of a support in the game. Uh, him and Geb probably have the best support passives in the game. Uh, when he's tipsy, he takes 7% less damage, and he gets 10 magical power, and when he's smashed, he gets 4 he takes 14% less damage and he gains 30 magical power. So the best part about it is in order to get this up, you do your chug skill, which also gives you protection. So on top of your percentage reduction taking damage less, you also get more protections afterwards. So it's actually one of the best combo skills, honestly, in the game with your passive. But the skill you're going to level first is belly flop. Uh, most of the time you'll wait to level your skill on a support until uh, after your warding in the jungle because you don't know if you're going to get caught or not so you want to level up your getaway skill sometimes but as it turns out the skill that's going to do the most damage for you is also your getaway skill on Marcus so you can go ahead and just level your belly flop as soon as the game starts uh, so you're going to get that level 1 you're going to rank up your belch of the gods to max first this will also be the second skill that you get the reason you're going to level this up first is it does more damage at the end uh, than belly flop it's also guaranteed damage pretty much the belly flop is relatively easy to miss uh the belch of the gods is a cone in front of you you won't be missing it so you're going to level up belch of the gods to max first then you're going to level up belly flop to max after belch of the gods the reason why you don't level up chug first is while it gives you more in your drunko meter and it gives you more protections the mana cost of it also goes up from 40 to 140 and if you level that up second chances are you're going to start to have uh, mana problems you can level it up second but until you're, I would level up your three and your two first, honestly. You can keep your drunk at max, even with rank one, with no problem. And the extra 20 protections isn't going to make that big of a difference for you until you get it all the way up, and then it'll just be a nice extra thing to have. But you'd rather have the extra damage on your belly flop. Level up your Intoxicate whenever you can. It is one of the best uh, ultimates in the game for a support, after probably Gavin Sylvanas. It does a lot of damage. It gives you a magical power buff if you're smashed when you use it because you're mad that you lost your wine. And it's got an intoxication debuff, which is a unique debuff in Smite, which lasts for 8 seconds, which is also the longest duration of a CC in Smite. And it makes everybody all, all wibbly wobbly and they walk all crazy and they can't do anything. And you can bead out of it, but if they bead out of your Intoxicate, then you have a stun on your belt to the gods, and you have a hard knockup on your belly flop, and you can do those on them. So honestly, it's a very great skill set for Bacchus. Alright, let's head into this game. Now that we're into this game, got some words out of the start of this game. Got my belly flop leveled up. Bacchus is actually one of the best supports in the game for stealing mid-harpies. You're going to see why. It's kind of cheesy. 
You just kind of walk up. You go do 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 do. I'm Mario Cruz. You're gonna jump in, belly flop everything, and then what are they gonna do? Your belly flop does enough damage to level one to put the harpies in the hogmo range. And if anybody is in range of the mid harpies, when you go to get them, they're gonna be popped up, and so you're gonna be able to hog before their support, even if their support is there. Uh, good way to put yourself ahead early game if you're on the order side of the map. Knocked out this blue buff, got it for Cupid, now we're going to go ahead and get into this lane, try to get some early lane clear. The one problem with Bacchus is his early lane clear is not that good, but luckily we are against an Athena, and her early lane clear, unless done very properly, is also not very good. Unfortunately, we also have a Cupid, and a Cupid's lane clear is not very good, but the and her and Athena are both going to be behind, so we're going to be able to keep our presence over here and keep this lane control going for us. Make sure to use your belt on the whole way. Very important to make sure you're hitting the archers to get the uh, damage off of them. The archers do a lot of damage early game. So you also want to be careful about hitting too often the other players. If you hit their gods and the archer minions are still up, those archer minions will aggro onto you and you'll take a lot of damage. So if you can find a way to use your belt without hitting them, that would be the preferential situation. Getting taunted by Athena. I'm taking a little bit of damage, but not a big deal. I see that the archers are pretty much dead, so I'm just going to look to get a little bit harassed. If I can jump on Anher, their taunts are down, their knockups down. They can't bring me into the tower range. So just putting a little pressure on them. We actually get quite a bit of harass off right there because our minions were still up. Always look for opportunities to get off some harass. I have a Cupid with me, so even if I get hit by their taunt and pale combos, it's not going to be that big of a deal. I'll just heal it right back up. I also have potions on top of all of that. Trying to zone them out a little bit, looking for an opportunity to jump in on them. They both group up, so I'm going to get a lot of free damage off right here. The archer minions were still up, but they were dying, and we had our full wave coming at it, so there wasn't a big deal. I wasn't going to take any more damage than they were. As long as you're doing more damage to them than they are to you, it's a win. If you can keep winning those trades over and over and over again, you'll keep your lane control and maybe get a kill. Nothing crazy, just typical laning phase. I had an early level 5 because of the mid harpy steal. This will give me more leeway going into these mid harpies. Normally, I would have to stay for this whole wave coming right now in order to hit level 5. I'm still going to try to get a bit of this XP. Just because I'm ahead doesn't mean I want to lose out in this wave. The Athena is not going to make it to the mid harpy in time anyway. I see her rotating behind her tower to get to the mid harpies, which means I know it's time for me to get out of here. I gotta start making my way over to mid harpies as well. I get to take the much shorter path of these mid harpies, but Athena does have her dash, which is going to allow her to get here as well. I see Athena behind me, so I start using my belts. This will be enough for me to hog it. She comes in trying to steal them, but I get my stun off with my three. Kali's coming around the corner, so I'm trying to look for a play onto this Athena. We get a stun onto him. I go to use my ultimate, and Athena's going to have a brilliant taunt here, actually, which is going to prevent me from ulting her and actually save her life. Very smart play by the Athena. Grabbing this mid XP while I'm here, making sure none of this goes to waste. Got to make sure you grab those XP when you can. Making sure that that Harpy's not up. Never actually saw them do it, so just clearing it out and making sure nothing crazy is happening. Backing up, getting my boots and some wards. Bacchus is one of the few supports that actually I will get mana pots on, on the first back or two. This is just because of how mana dependent he is, and how skill dependent he is on having mana due to the chug skill. You have to keep clicking it over and over and over again to make sure you're getting smashed. So you have to make sure that you have proper mana. Also a good time to throw out that whenever you back to base, or whenever you're about to back to base on Bacchus, it's a good idea to use your chug. And her out of position here, he's going to completely underestimate how much damage Bacchus actually does early game, and I'm going to get a free kill right here. Getting my full belt of the gods off on him, he uses his impale on the wave, and that's going to run him out of mana, not going to matter anyway. With a combination of my belly flop and my ultimate, he will not have a chance to get away. I see Kali rotating in here, so we're going to get a lot of free damage in this Athena. She dashed it out just before I can get my belly flop off, and so she's going to get away. 
regardless of not killing her, we still got a lot of damage off, and that's very important. Unfortunately, Thanatos at this point is getting quite big. Um, early game Thanatos is quite scary, and he is taking advantage of these poor guys on my team. I really want this blue buff right here. It's also not a bad fight for us. We get the blue buff, but they're going to have a Vulcan rotation early, and the Vulcan ult is going to do a lot of damage to me. I'm trying to help out my team as much as I can, but now I'm in trouble. The Vulcan turret is destroying me, so I've got to get away from the Vulcan turret. I've got the blue buff, so I chug to take a little bit less damage, and I'm going to jump out of here, and I'm going to be okay. The Ra is going to pick up a nice kill there in the Anher, and Thanatos is going to start rotating over himself. At this point, there's nothing I can do to help my team, so I'm just going to back, get some more to my Midas boots, and hope I can get back in time in case anything crazy is going to happen. Unfortunately, the Cupid's going to get caught out by Thanatos, and that's going to give him way too many kills early game for Thanatos. This is going to make this a very long game. But if we can make it to end game, we have both Kali and Osiris and Bacchus, three of the best late game characters in their respective roles. And so that's our plan right now is to make it to end game. Thanatos has the speed buff, and so I don't quite hit him with my belly flop, but that's all right. So it gives him the idea that there's going to be pressure on him. They have three people around the mid harpy, but I don't want to give these up quite for free, so I'm going to try to get some pressure on them. I jump in, I'm going to get a drunk. Uh, a smash and, Jesus, belly flop on all three of them. There we go. Rod's going to give me a nice heal here. We're going to be able to keep this fight going. They're going to do a lot of damage to me. I'm going to try to live as hard as I can. I have to juke as hard as I can to get away from the Thanatos. And I'm going to get away here with 13 hit points. Just barely getting away, but just barely getting away is kind of like completely getting away. So as far as I'm concerned, it was calculated. And her is going to go ahead... Or the not, you know, the Anher is going to go ahead and die to the tower here. Nobody got any hits on him, which is unfortunate. That would have been good gold for uh, our team as we are down just a little bit. Nothing crazy, but about 800 gold or so. Our Raw picks up another nice kill on the Nox, which is going to be good. Nox is most prominent in the early game, and so if you can shut her down early game, it will very much hinder her late game, which is already kind of lackluster. Getting my wards out here. I see that they have a regular ward in the gold fairy. I'm just going to get to count out that for free. No pressure. Working my way back towards the mid lane, trying to see if we can do anything on this Vulcan. I see the Athena is here as well, so I'm just going to have to kind of walk myself out. The game is relatively even. So at this point, I'm just kind of roaming around the map, trying to help out the lanes as much as I can. My focus being on mid lane and the ADC lane right now. I can't really rotate over to the solo lane because Gold Fury is up. Athena, one of the few supports that can rotate over to the solo lane, even if the Gold Fury is up, because she can ultimate back to the Gold Fury. One of a very, uh, a very unique aspect to Athena in the support role. I'm taking a lot of damage here, and I'm thinking about backing, but Ra's gonna throw me a nice heal, which is gonna allow me to stick around. We have a pretty good fight here, so we're kind of just looking around to do some damage. They group up enough for me to belly flop them both. Bra lands his ultimate. I land mine as well. And we're trying to get the hurt on them right here. The Vulcan's in a very bad position right now. Unfortunately, the Ra misses both his beam and his heal on the Vulcan. Uh, Kali will be able to clean up the kill, but we might have been able to get both the Athena and the Vulcan if the Ra would have landed his skills right there. Mechanics. They are important. Learn mechanics. Everybody misses skill. It happens, but get him down. Back to the base, making sure I chug to get my maximum meter before I get out because you get the mana regen in the fountain. Also making sure to pick up a sentry ward. I'm starting to think about grabbing actives. Haven't gotten one yet because I'm not sure if I want to start building into a sovereignty or if I want to grab my active first. The active I'm thinking about right now is definitely shell. No reason to get a weakening curse. They don't have any true healing on their team. Trying to get this blue buff from them, but unfortunately won't be able to get it. I get silenced by the Thanatos and I can't grab it. Probably one of the um, most questionable Cupid ults I've ever seen. I respect that he ulted and went for the kill, and we probably could have killed the Anher, but I'm not 100% sure the logic behind ulting inside the blue buff. I don't know if he thought they were going to 
juke inside the blue buff and then jump over the wall into our tower. But we, we'll have to talk about that later. Me and him will have a little a little talking. Let's see what this game plan was. Well, they took our blue buff, so let's take their blue buff. That's the plan right here. Unfortunately, Thanatos and Athena decide that they do not want me to do that. Vulcan rotating over as well. We're looking to have a team fight here, but we are out of position compared to them, and Ra is going to be caught way out. Helping him as much as we can. I'm trying to force them out. Of course, the Vulcan out hits me. We have no Ra right now, and he's completely out of mana as well, so we're just trying to back up. Kali takes a solid scythe to the face. At this point, I'm starting to get worried that they're going to be doing the Gold Fury, so I have to rotate over to make sure that I'm not doing it. I see them on a ward going to mid, which means I know that they're not doing the Gold Fury, so I don't got to worry about it anymore. But, Andrew's doing his blue buff, and as is my job, I'm going to put some pressure on him. Try my hardest to get this blue buff. Try to turn it around so he won't be able to hit the blue buff, but unfortunately, he still finds a way to hit the big fat blue minion. We don't have much mid harpy control this game, and that's because the Thanatos got very big early, and the Thanatos at this point is a much bigger presence than the Kali is. So we've had to give up several mid harpies that we wouldn't have otherwise had to give up if they didn't have such a uh, early game god and we had a late game god. But the late game god will come back to help us. Osiris is getting three men dove on right. I try to go over and help him, but I see that there's nothing I can do. He's already dead. Backing up, grabbing wards and my tier one going into sovereignty. Luckily they stopped pushing the right lane. They might have honestly been able to get the tier two off of that, but they call it off and they start working back towards their respective lanes. They're now up about 2,000 gold, which is where you're going to start to see a disparity. 1,000 gold isn't that bad. If you're down 1,000 gold, not a big deal. You can deal with it. 2,000 gold, you're going to start to feel the uh, differences in the 1v1 matchups. This is where the hunters are going to start feeling it when they're down 500 gold. That's going to be about a tier of an item difference or perhaps uh, two tiers maybe of an active. So this is where your uh, individual characters such as Solo Lane and the ADC are going to start to start feeling the hurt in their 1v1 matchups. So I don't want to use my hog right here because they have Gold Fury coming right up. I don't think the Raw understands this, and the Raw doesn't use any skills on the mid harpies, and so we don't get either of them, unfortunately. Still not a bad fight for us. They used a lot of their skills on the mid harpies. I'm looking for a stun on the Vulcan. We're going to get it. Looking to get a lot of pressure on him. Raw gets a great ultimate off on the Vulcan. I'm trying to capitalize on this, and we just don't have anybody here to help out, unfortunately. The Kali is back doing minions and did not throw her daggers at him. I get a little bit upset and I try to go for him, but I'm not going to be able to quite reach him and they won't be able to quite reach me. This gives me an opportunity to back up. I'm going to take it. I'll be able to get tier 2 heading towards sovereignty. And I have to wait just a moment before I can get my sentry ward. After 10 minutes in the game, that's about when you want to start worrying about getting sentry wards over regular wards. Um, if you can get both, great, get both, but at about the 10 minute mark is when you're thinking about switching over to strictly sentries if you can only afford one or the other. And here was out of position for a moment, but I can't quite reach him, so I'm going to go back and help Cupid get his blue buff. Cupid makes a very weird play here. He dives in on the Anher with little mana and no health. I have to drop doing the blue buff and make sure he doesn't die. I'm not 100% sure what he was doing, but it's not my job to know what he's doing. It's my job to save him after he doesn't do what he's supposed to do. That's my job. Quick little aside. Bacchus is one of the f few supports in the game that you won't be able to carry with in the typical sense. Ares you can carry... You can use your change, you can do crazy damage. Guan Yu, you can do crazy damage. Fenrir, Odin, all of those kind of uh, high ability damage based gods, you can do a lot of work with, and you can, might be able to go 10 and 0 and carry the game. And I've done that in some of my previous videos. Bacchus 
on the other hand, is so CC oriented, which makes him perfect for uh, competitive play, honestly. He's, Bacchus works the best in a team scenario where you all have very good communication, because then you can combo all your skills together very nicely with a Bacchus. Bacchus is one of the harder and more frustrating gods to play in casual queue, ranked queue, um, without your team, you know. It's very hard to play Bacchus because even if you do all of your setup stuff, it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be followed up properly, and you might not have the communication to follow it up anyway. Kali is going to get caught out right there, and unfortunately this is going to put me in a very poor position as well. I'm going to get caught out by the Athena taunt, and the Thanatos is going to be able to clean this up. And of course, Vulcanol is going to hit me because I haven't missed a Vulcanol in this game. If there's a Vulcanol on the map, I swear by golly I'm going to find it. Because they picked off both me and Kali, they're going to have a free Gold Fury opportunity here, and this is going to give them upwards of a 4k gold lead. This is going to be a really big deal. I'm still up in XP, technically, on their support. Now we're even due to the Gold Fury. Our ADC is down two levels, and that's going to be a big problem for him, considering the fact he's also Cupid. I don't recommend playing Cupid, but if you have to play Cupid, I don't recommend being down two levels. As I said, their ADC is going to have his way with Cupid because he's just too far behind. They're also going to be able to clean up the Ra here. Both Cupid and Ra rotated too late into the Gold Fury trying to defend it. And they're going to lose their lives for it, as well as the Gold Fury. At this point, now the Gold Lead is out to about 5k. This is about the point. 5,000 gold is the point of almost no return. That's where you're kind of looking at, it's not up to you really anymore to win the game, it's up to the other team to lose the game, if that makes sense. When you get that 5k gold lead, that is your moment to know that, hey, we can win the game, and we should be able to carry this out. So if you do the right moves and the right plays, you are going to be able to just kind of flow through the rest of the game and take it home. But as the other team, this relieves a lot of pressure, and you just go, keep playing, Farm up, get wards out, look for opportunities for picks, and we gotta take small wins. That's what you're looking for right now on the op uh, on the losing team. You're looking for small wins. So, pick off in a tier one tower. Maybe just a pick off. Maybe one split push and get a tier one tower over the solo lane. Tiny stuff like that. That's what you're looking for. Nothing crazy. This is not the look for big plays, get all five kills, hail mary right now. This is the just kind of gently wade your way back into the game. Putting a little pressure on Vulcan right here. Unfortunately, Rod does not rotate over to help me, and Anne is once again going to kill our Cupid. One of the most important things that you need to do as a player in Smite when your team is losing is you need to calm them down. A lot of people will start to freak out and they go, GG, game's over, let it go, F6. And that's not necessarily the case a lot of the times. You know, when emotions are running high, people get angry. And a lot of the times, you can calm them down just by saying, yo, we got this. That phrase can honestly calm people down so much. Yo, we got this. Don't worry. Trust. You know, just stuff like that. You know, just be nice about it. The Kali wants to come over and gank the left lane, so I'm trying to bait them in as hard as I can. I'm trying to get him to take some tower shots. The Anher is going to take some tower shots. I'm going to ult the make him drunk for the Kali to come in here. He has to use his jump as well, which means the Kali can just beat on him, and Kali's going to find herself a nice kill here on this Anher. Getting some extra damage here on this Athena. We're trying to get him. He's going to dash away before I get my stun off on my three. No big deal. That's one of those small wins I'm talking about. I baited him in the tower. They got a little cocky. They thought they were more ahead than they were. They came into the tower. The Anher was taking tower shots. The Athena probably should have been taking the tower. And we get a nice kill there. Unfortunately, my team is going to go extremely deep right here into the left lane. And get themselves in quite a pickle. But they seem to be doing okay getting themselves out. Our Osiris does a really good job on right lane. And he starts to take on the Thanatos 1v1. Now that we're hitting about the 20 minute mark, this is the point of the game where our Osiris and our Kali are both turning up the pace. This is where the Thanatos starts to drop off the Kali and the Osiris start to come into their game. 
And so this is now where we can start looking for maybe a little bit more aggressive plays. You know, we kind of chilled out for like four or five minutes. We didn't do anything super crazy. And now we're just going to kind of look for more opportunities. We're getting mid harpies. Mid harpies is great when you're behind. If you can get them, great. But you don't want to die for mid harpies at this point in the game. They're not worth it. If you can get them, that's great. A little bit, little, little things here and there. But you don't want to kill yourself for a mid harpy. It'll be way more detrimental. Uh, you die, they get a tower. You die, they get gold fury. You die, they get another kill because somebody comes to help you. It's just not worth it. Our raw, unfortunately, is not in a good position, but I'm going to give them shell, and Cupid's going to come in and help, but it's not going to be enough. But we're going to get a kill on their Thanatos, and we're going to keep our pressure on right here. We get ourselves in an interesting situation. I'm going to get a belly flop on both the Nox and the Anher, put some damage on them. Try to body block the Athena for a little bit, get some damage on her. But honestly, that one-for-one -one exchange is going to be... Um, in our favor. So we're just going to go ahead and back up here. Unfortunately, the Kali is going to go ham and we have to go back in with her. And she is going to get killed. Our Osiris makes a very good play in the other lane and he 1v1s the Vulcan, which is going to be very important for our survival. Kali complaining that she got body blocked, but she also went back in when we should have retreated. So give or take. Give or take. Couldn't afford any wards on this back. I am starting to work into my Magi's Blessing. Uh, almost always build that as your third item on support. Our Osiris has the dodges like Jagger, and he's going to keep running around, and he's going to make a really good play that's going to help us. Him living right there is very big. Nox is going to be completely out of position. Unfortunately, this Nox is going to live because of the Anher Pillar. The Anher Pillar blocked her which miss made the raw beam miss. I don't know if you've ever heard of such a thing, but she got body blocked by a teammate, which allowed her to live. I can't make this stuff up. Sometimes when it rains, it pours. But that's all right. The most important thing right now is that the gold deficit is not increasing that much from the 5K. So basically, six minutes ago, there was a 5K gold deficit. Six minutes later, we have a 5k gold deficit. That means that they're not forcing the lead. They're not using their 5k lead effectively to get a bigger lead, which means that we just keep waiting it out until our Osiris and our colleague come online. Got to be very careful now. We're trying not to get picked off as hard as we can. The Vulcan's putting a lot of pressure on the left lane, but Kali is going to be able to rotate onto him. Vulcan Ultimate is down, and he's going to get a lot of damage onto our team. I'm going to do my best to get some damage onto him. I'm going to do a lot of damage, but unfortunately, it's not going to quite be enough damage. The Athena and Anher are going to dive our Cupid, but they're not quite going to get him, which is going to be very good for us. We have to start being careful now. The Gold Fury is up. We have to worry about them being able to do the Gold Fury if we get picked off. Our Osiris is once again engaging in a 1v1 over in the solo lane, and he's going to go ahead and take another kill over there. He's now on a killing spree. This is what we're looking for. We're waiting it out. Our Osiris is getting big. He's turned on. He's got his damage now. He's got his tankiness. As soon as Kali comes online, this game will be over, and we're actually going to win. Sometimes you have to look at your team comp, and you have to go, all right, we're not early game. If we survive the early game, if we can make it there, we're going to win. You know, And that's just how the team comps roll sometimes. Sometimes you just have that end game, hyper carry team comp. You got Bacchus for setups. You got Osiris and Kali to go ham. You got Ra to heal to keep both of the Osiris and the Kali up. That's a big deal. Trying to get a little pressure here on the Anher. The cube is not even close to me, but I'm going to be able to burn both his beads and his sprint while Osiris simultaneously picks up another kill in the solo lane, also picking up the tower. Keeping my pressure over here in the left lane. Normally, I would try to leave the left lane, but our Cupid is three levels down on this Anher, and he's going to need my help. So as a support, it's my job to notice which lanes need help and why. Normally, you're going to want to rotate over to the mid lane and help them, maybe go over to right lane, try to help them push. But if I leave this left lane, he's going to just get destroyed 1v1 by the Anher, just due to the fact that he's so far behind. Our gold deficit is no longer 5,000, it's about 4,000, which is really good for us. 
any small improvement like that is very big. And the other team should start to be worried that they're no longer 5,000 gold ahead and that honestly they're not six, seven, eight thousand gold ahead. I tried to get us to do gold theory several times while they were over and fighting in right lane, but unfortunately Cupid did not come and help me. The team rotates over eventually to do the gold theory, but it has been too late. Now we're looking for this Vulcan. The Vulcan does not have his beads up. We're going to be able to pick up this kill, and it's going to take way longer than it should have. Once again, more skill. Oh my god, we're actually not going to get him. That's embarrassing. Once again, the Ra misses his skills, which is going to put us in a very bad predicament. You got to land your skills. The Thanatos is going to collapse on me, and he's also going to hit Cupid at the same time, and Hindsight, I should not have jumped next to the Cupid. I should have jumped away from the Cupid. That way the Cupid would have lived. Due to those pickoffs, they're going to be able to get a free Gold Fury, and they're going to go from being 4,000 Gold ahead back up to being about eight to 9,000 Gold ahead. At this point, Nikali thinks the game is over. She says, GG, I want out no more. And you just got to calm them down. You got to go, it's all right. It's okay. The one thing you got to keep in mind is you never know what the other team is thinking. You never know if they're like, oh yeah, we're going to do this. But you, the other team, especially when you're in casual games, ranked games, chances are they're arguing. If you don't have somebody on your team saying, yo, we got this, calm down, we're good, even if they're winning, they're probably arguing. So just keep playing the game out, keep your team calm, and look, get a goal in mind. Be like, hey, let's just think about it. We got to get the mid tower. We got to get the tier one down. We got to get this objective. We got to get the map control. Give people objectives and they'll get their mind off of thinking and being down. Trying to get a little presence around the map again. Trying to get a little bit of XP. Taking the little wins where you can. There's a fight happening over in left lane right now. Our Kali tears up the Anher. That is it, boys. 27 minutes in. Our Kali has turned on. And this is our time. I'm going to jump over here. Unfortunately, I'm going to get the kill. And our Kali is not going to be happy. Because that was her marked target. I'm not going to say anything because I'm embarrassed. Luckily, Osiris will come to my defense. And I go, oh, awkward. Oh, that's awkward. That's, that's BM. That's all right. Kali will still carry me to victory in all of her glory. Our Cupid is finally getting a chance to free farm in left lane by himself. He's going to be able to get that tower. The knock shows up, but not quick enough before he takes the tower, which is good for us. We have our ward on Fire Giant to make sure they don't do that. Bacchus is one of the best uh, stealing guardians in the game. I would say arguably the only person that's better is perhaps Athena or Geb. Um, Sylvanas, okay. Geb, very good at stealing. Athena, really good at stealing. Bacchus, belly flop, one of the best skills for stealing objectives in the game. Uh, the hard knockup is really good and, and not possible for their guardian to get out of. They won't have the beads uh, to preemptively use them before the knockup. Um, the only way they won't be able to get hit by it is if they have the Magi's. But the Magi's will most likely be taken off by the Fire Giant knockup. At this point, we're rotating over to right lane. We have our Osiris and our Kali in the same fight. This is going to be what we're looking for. This is the fight that we want. I ward over the wall, and I see the Thanatos. I'm going to go ahead and grab him, put some pressure on him. He's going to immediately ult. He gets very scared. At this point, we're only about 5,000 gold behind, and we're going to get a lot of kills. We're going to get this knocked down. We're going to turn around. I see the Thanatos came back in. I'm going to get them both drunk, push some pressure on this Vulcan. He pops his beads. Boom, knocked up. Our Osiris comes over with a great ultimate, gets a kill. They get a DC. Our Osiris gets a triple kill. And they're going to surrender while they're 4,000 gold up because they're so mad at each other. Their DC immediately comes back. Their team was so upset at each other and so convinced that Osiris Kali was a better late game that they just stopped all together. And they're like, I'm done playing. We're done. And that's why you never give up. You never know what is happening in the other team's mind. Even when you're behind, you just stay calm, you stay cool, you stay collective. That's what you got to do. Looking at our win screen here, we get 10 worshippers for that game, and that's pretty exciting. 
More importantly, though, we're going to look at player damage. Doing 15,000 player damage on Bacchus, building full defense. Don't build damage items on Bacchus, pretty much, and you still do a lot of damage due to the nature of the fact that your skills are all uh, AoE. Made to get a lot of damage on Bacchus due to your tankiness. Take a lot of damage on the fact because of the fact that you're Bacchus. Do a lot of work. I was only involved in seven kills, but honestly, we didn't have that many kills. Um, <laughs> we won that game pretty much because the other team was mad at each other. They were upset at each other, and we stayed. We stayed calm, and we stayed. We played as a team. We played as a team. That's very important. Going over to our final build here. Final build was Midas boots, sovereignty. Magi's and I was actually working myself into a Soul Reaver. I could feel that I was actually doing more damage uh, than perhaps my other members of my team. And so I thought that a Soul Reaver would be very beneficial for us if we could ultimate one of their main targets like their Anher or their Thanatos. That Soul Reaver proc was going to give us a lot of opportunities. Thank you guys for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. This one was a little bit different. Instead of going ham all game, this was a behind game. I know you guys had requested that and wanted to see that. You know, see the differences between playing from ahead and playing from behind. Like the video. Please subscribe to me on YouTube. I also have a Twitch where I stream Monday through Friday in the morning. You can follow me on Twitter and you will let you know when I'm streaming and when I release new YouTube videos. Have a Twitch day, y'all.